Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this beautiful July day. We're in full swing of summer. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, obviously, we're going to be serving the meals shortly, and then uh, Officer Kevin McDonald is going to uh, talk today. Just want to remind everybody, um, if you haven't been away uh, yesterday or, or recently, it was, I believe it was yesterday, we had a house break where we made an arrest. Um, Heads Up Neighbors uh, gave us a call, and uh, we were allowed to make, uh, take the person into custody. You'll probably see some press releases on it later on today. Uh, but just remind everyone, keep your houses locked, stay vigilant. Um, when you see something out of the ordinary in your neighborhood, uh, yesterday, uh, someone called because someone suspicious was uh, in, in the West Street area of town. And, you know, they weren't doing anything wrong, but we were able to check it out and make sure. And then in another instance, they called up for a suspicious person. And uh, lo and behold, here they are coming out of a house after trying to, you know, after breaking in. So uh, it's, it's, oh, if you think it looks, you know, call us. We'd rather uh, investigate and look into something. It'd be nothing than then come back later uh, and have to, you know, collect evidence. Uh, in, in the couple of house breaks that we have, just so you know, um, our detectives and crime scene people now recover DNA evidence, blood evidence, fingerprint evidence, tire impressions, different things. You know, we're doing that now here in Uxbridge, uh, and we expect uh, to also close those cases as well. So um, again, summer months are here. These things happen, uh, so just try to stay vigilant. And I don't know if you remember a while back um, on our Facebook page, a uh, little girl approached Officer McDonald, Officer Kevin McDonald, who's going to be speaking to you today about what I just talked about, about staying safe, um, was conducting traffic enforcement in an area. It's one of the, really one of the big complaints that I get as the chief or that we get as a department is, you know, people that are driving too fast or going through stop signs and, and et cetera. So Officer McDonald, when he's not answering calls, he goes out and he does traffic enforcement. This little girl was very thankful slowing cars down in her neighborhood and he, she came up and she gave up flower to Officer McDonald and a, a picture was taken of it and we put it on our Facebook page because we thought it was really nice and it just took off. It literally went viral. Um, I mean one of our most, it's kind of crazy what people you know find fascinating but uh, it really did. It, it kind of inspired all of us and and I was telling you about um, an FBI agent down at Quantico was, was teaching a class uh, to the academy down there and he utilized that post with all the negative things going on we hear in Baltimore and Ferguson about um, the positive interactions that police have and those little moments that you never hear about. And this little girl really sparked that. So uh, I was kind of taken by it, and I basically challenged the community to say, if you come in and bring us a flower, dandelions accepted, you know, I would make a personal donation uh, to the Oxford Senior Center. So I'm here today with Kevin McDonald here to present a check uh, for $100 from me to the Senior Center. Uh, and I thank Officer McDonald for all his hard work and, and you for supporting us. So that being said, I will turn the mic over so you can eat. I'm sure you're hungry. I can't just, I, I don't know what to say. I'm so touched by this. I think it's a really nice way to pay it forward. It's such a delight and a pleasure to work so closely with our police department. I know that whenever we need you, we can count on you. You are always there for us. And I think it makes a difference in our community. I think it makes our community not only safe, but proud. And we know we can turn to you with any question. Whenever I need help, the chief is always here and the officers are always here for us. So. Thank you from our hearts for this nice donation and for all your support. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll just take a moment to give thanks. We have certainly a lot to be thankful for, and then we'll have lunch. Good afternoon again, everybody. We'll get going. Obviously, um, let you finish your meals. Uh, before we start, just a couple of things I, I want to share. Obviously, um, we talked about the radio uh, problem that public safety was having, and town meeting approved uh, some funding for it for upgrade. But uh, we applied for a grant. We didn't receive the grant. It was for approximately $100,000. And our representative, Kevin Kuros, was very disappointed, um, and he was almost daily you know, 
f trying to find out the status of this grant, and we found out, you know, we weren't awarded it. So he, t he took it a step further to the House and put it in this, the budget, um, and he actually uh, allocated $25,000 will be coming in uh, for this radio project. So I'm very thankful to Representative Kuros. If you see him, you know, please thank him as well. Um, hopefully that will be a savings, you know, to the town. So I wanted to publicly thank him. Uh, and also wanted to acknowledge uh, my assistant, Jean Daly, for all her hard work. She's here with us today. And Jen, uh, Monica, you know, is our uh, Board of Selectmen chairperson and also on the school committee now. I, I thank you for coming. Um, almost every month, Jen is here. So if you have any questions about town or any issues, I think it's great. And she's here. She'll answer your questions. She's uh, been a, a phenomenal team player to work with. Um, as far as I'm concerned as Chief of Police. So without further ado, um, one of my senior officers, Kevin McDonald, is going to talk about uh, some safety issues. Um, I'll turn the mic over to him. Thanks, Chief. Good morning. I'm Officer McDonald, as the Chief said. Uh, just give you a little history on me. I've been on the police department here for 25 years. Uh, Right after I got out of the Marine Corps, I landed, I, well, I grew up in town, but uh, I landed a job here with the police department. I uh, uh, worked midnights for 18 years. I've been on the SWAT team for Central Mass for 10 years. I'm a firearms instructor. I'm a less lethal instructor. So with an instructor background, I tend to go on and on and on. I'm going to try to cut this short. Uh, I'm here to speak about give you basically home security tips, uh, things that you can do to make your residence, your apartment, anything like that safer for you if you go down to the store or even if you're home. Uh, I'll start with the exterior of the house. Lighting at nighttime, very important. If, if you have the means, uh, sensor lights for motion, de uh, motion detector lights. They're not on all the time, so you're not going to incur a cost as far as lighting up your whole backyard all night long. But if something comes along, large animal, people, it goes on. It'll tend to scare somebody away. Uh, if you have brush around your house, you want to clear your windows. Get it away from the house and that. You're giving somebody a place to hide and work on a window to get entry into your house without your neighbors seeing or without us being able to see when we're driving by. Uh, as far as the interior of your house and that, we'll move out like an alarm system. If you have an alarm system, use it. If you have an alarm system, get them checked periodically. If you find you're getting frequent uh, false alarms, you want to get that checked and you want to get that fixed not only for your, your own peace of mind in that, but your neighbors are going to be tired of hearing it. So when it does go off, God forbid somebody makes entry into your house, they're not going to pay attention to it. Uh, yeah, boy who cried wolf. Perfect example. So if you're having false alarms, you, you want to uh, keep up to date on that. Call, contact your alarm company, have them fix that. Uh, let's see. If you don't have an alarm system, you can't afford an alarm system. Sometimes you can get, find uh, alarm stickers for your windows in that. You might not actually have an alarm system in your house, but if somebody's potentially going to case your house to break in and they see that you potentially have an alarm in there, like a fake alarm company sticker or something on your windows, go ahead and use them. It, it won't hurt. Somebody might go look at that sticker and go and pass on to the next house or hopefully out of town. Um, now we'll go to uh, the structure itself as far as your homes, your apartments, anything like that. We'll talk about doors. Everyone has locks on their doors, I'm sure. Can I have a show of hands if you're not too busy? Who has deadbolts on their doors, exterior doors? Deadbolts are a great thing. That's what you want to use. And if you're going to want to go out and purchase or change your locks, get the deadbolts that you have to open it with a key on the inside and the outside if it's an exterior door. If you have the one that you, ha you can throw the lock, 
uh, latch and open it. If somebody breaks that window, they can reach in and unlock it. Uh, so if you have one with the key on each side, they're not going to be able to do that. They'll break the window, they'll try to open it, then they're going to have to go to another means to try to gain entry into your house. Uh, strike plates on your bolts, uh, on your dead bolts and your regular locks. The weakest part of your door, and typically when somebody's casing your house and they're potentially going to break in, the weakest point of your door is the door jam. It's only an inch thick, and it's typically a soft pine wood. The screws that they give you to install those, usually three quarters of an inch, so it's only biting into that soft pine, into that door jam. Go out a couple dollars for a little added extra security. Get those nice long three inch screws, like patio screws or something like that that's really tough and that'll go right into the structure of your house. It'll make it that much harder for them to kick your door in if that's what they're going to do. Potentially they'll give it a couple kicks and they might go down the road or try to go somewhere else to try to get uh, if they're going to break into a house. And it, it's nice and it's simple and it's fairly cheap. Um, Okay, windows in that. Uh, I'm not sure if you, many people are actually aware. You can buy a film. If you have tinted windows in your car, it's a little, typically a, a little film, easy to apply. You can buy a security film for wind, uh, house windows. Your door windows, uh, first floor windows, easy to apply. You can have them pro uh, professionally done. And it's a uh, laminate film that makes it harder to break. Or if they try to break it, it'll shatter, but won't fall apart. It's that much harder to get in. And you'll see a lot of businesses have that. And I can give you an example. Uh, we're having a series of breaks approximately seven to 10 years ago down on the north end of town, a lot of commercial businesses. The Shell Station, right on the corner of East Hafford Ave and North Main Street, they were getting broken into. They had a company come in, and all they did was put that laminate on that uh, glass door, the party uh, uh, video. We got, they tried to break in again. We observed the video. The guy had a hammer, and he kept whacking it. He broke the window, but he wasn't able to get inside. He went back to the point where he stepped back, and he just launched it and walked away uh, You know, in frustration. Uh, so that's something you want to think about. Just a simple laminate that goes onto your uh, glass for your uh, doors. Okay, sliding patio doors. If your house is equipped with that, nice and simple. You get a bar, a large piece of wood, and where that door closed, you have that track. Cut it to fit that track. So let's say they defeat the lock on that patio door. They can't slide it because of that. It's stopping that uh, door from being opened. Nice, simple, you might be able to do it with wood around the house. Same thing with your windows, a regular sash window. You close it. If you put a, cut a piece of wood to jam up on that top window, because it only takes seven pounds of pressure with a flat bar to defeat the screws on a regular lock. All, all criminals know if they're breaking into house, all they have to do is get a flat bar in the, in the jam on the bottom, give it a nice little jerk, and that window might as well be unlocked. But if you have a piece of wood up there to re, uh, secure that, they can't defeat the bolts because they, they can't get through the wood. Uh, another thing little longer bolts not to touch the glass and break your glass on those locks. So if you get, forget to put a piece of wood up there to jam that down, that might help give a little bit more security. If you have air conditioners in your windows, you definitely want to put a piece of wood on there. You have the air conditioner and that window is typically, it, it's open. And I've seen a lot of house breaks that we have where they just 
they'll go around, they'll see an AC unit in the window, and they just push it in. Basically, that's an unlocked window they can crawl into, and the only effort they have to do is push an AC unit, and then it's an opening. And we, I've seen a lot of house breaks where that's done. If you can jam that AC unit in and make it so that window won't open up anymore with that piece of wood jammed in there, they're not going to be able to do that. Uh, go right back, right to your cars and, and, and wrap it up. Lock your car doors at night. Don't leave any valuables, especially in plain view, in your cars. Most of the car brakes we have is for unlocked cars. If, they, if somebody comes by, they'll try to lock. If it's locked, they move to right to the next car. Nobody's, we're not seeing anyone breaking windows and trying to force a car door open to get inside to take your property. They're only doing it with unlocked cars, and most people leave their cars unlocked. They, that's what, just what they're used to. But it happens frequently, and I hear it all the time. Oh, you know, we live in Oxbridge all life. We never had to do that before. We get a lot of car breaks. And like the chief said, house breaks are ramping up. I don't know if it's the weather or what, but it's, it's starting. We had a nice little lull, but it's starting, they're starting to come in more and more. So you want to pay extra attention, especially you go to bed at night, make sure your doors are locked. If you have a, an alarm system, set the alarm. I'll give you a, a, one little, more little tip. At night, if you're home, if you have those little door stoppers to hold the door open, Everyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That'll also hold the door closed. If you have a basement door that doesn't have a lock on it, but basement has outside access, everyone forgets and leaves that unlocked. You give ac you're giving access to the basement. If you don't have a lock on your door, just have one of those and jam it into the bottom. It'll also keep it closed. On the SWAT team, we use those all the time. If we want to deny access to an area, we'll throw one of those down, kick it under the door. They can't open the door past that to get to where we're conducting whatever we're doing. It's simple, relatively cheap, like 50 cents for one of those if you go down a, a job lot or something like that. It'll also, bedroom door, if it opens in, you think you have an intruder in your house, and throw it in there. You just gave yourself a nice little safe room where it's going to prevent them. It's not going to completely, if they really put some weight into it, they're going to be able to defeat it, but maybe not. It gives you that little added bit of security, and it's cheap money. So I hope that anything's, everything I've said is helpful. If you have any questions, any concerns like that, I work day shift. Call. I'll be happy to discuss anything with you. Thank you very much.